Hi, everybody. I'm Ryan Schultz, and welcome to Metaverse Newscast, the news show where we interview the personalities behind social VR, virtual worlds, and the metaverse. My guest this evening is the talented avatar costume creator, Solus. Hi, Solus, and welcome. Hi, Ryan, and thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. I, lo I love your outfit. Did you make that? Of course I made it. Oh, Thank it's you. wonderful. Is it available in the store already? Yes. Great. Yes, it is in the Sansar store. And there's a version of it in Second Life also. Oh, really? That's it. That's great. I know that you also are a very talented avatar clothing creator in Second Life. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got started in virtual worlds and what attracted you to Sansar? Long story. Um, basically, I was a fashion designer for many years. In and, real life? In real life, yes. And was diagnosed with young and onset Parkinson's. And um, it finally became, I became so symptomatic that my doctor suggested I re retire and live a stress-free life. And of course, as anybody who is forced to retire at any age can tell you, um, it's kind of boring. So I started to explore different things and I stumbled into, my son was young at the time and he wanted me to help him design a video game, okay. a computer game. So I started investigating things and started learning how to do 3D creation and I just fell in love with it. And then cool. I found Second Life and I started to learn how to create clothing there. So I was able to take what I was skilled at and what I love doing in my real life and just sort of roll it over into a virtual life. Cool. So when did you start in Sansar? I started in Sansar in December um, 2016. So about, oh, around the same time that I did. Yeah. Yeah, about four months after, after they opened the closed uh, beta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what are your tools of the trade? What software do you use to create your clothing for Second Life and Sansar? Um, it's funny because I was in Second Life. I started in about 2007 and I toyed around with the clothing there, but I wasn't excited about the system clothing or the prim, um, flexi prim clothing. Oh, flexi prims, yeah. Yeah, so it didn't really captivate me until they started letting us bring in mesh. That was about 2012, I think, or 2011. Well, it was 2010 is when I started really doing it, but I think that was more or less because we were, um, they were starting to develop it. But 2011 is when I started my first store. Okay. The mesh, mesh clothing. And yeah, and as soon as that happened and the rigging, all of it, I just fell, fell in love with it. Great. And, yeah. And that, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a big puzzle when you're making something that you can't, that you don't have hands on, but yet it, you want it to act and respond like it would in real life. So right. it, it was, it's sort of a mystery and a, just a fun thing to figure out. Well, here's hoping that they implement cloth physics at some point in Sansar, because that would be truly amazing. Yeah. Um, it's funny before, before I was a part of Sansar, I did, I was in high fidelity and that was what brought me there was the whole cloth physics aspect of it um, and hope that they would go that route because knowing Philip is his whole, he's so into physics. I mean, that's his thing. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, it's interesting. And I still have yet to pop back in there to see because now they have, what is it called? The jelly bones or the wiggle bones? I, um, yeah, I'm not too familiar with it, but yeah, they do have something I do know. I've seen videos of like uh, avatars with floppy ears and things yeah. like that. So I want to kind of sort of see, just sort of see what they're doing and um, sort of like look under the hood, so to say, to see how they're doing it and why and what it's all about. The other thing I know, Sign Space... Um, is a science space? Yeah. Science they, space already has cloth physics. physics. Yes. Yeah. Correct. And I haven't really toyed with that. And that's another one I want to just play around with. But um, that involves unity, which I am just starting to toy with. But I haven't really perfected anything. So you like solving puzzles is what really yep. drew you yep. into creating yep. avatar clothing. Yep. Yep. What software do you use 
to create um, avatar clothing? I basically, um, seven years ago, I, well, it's kind of funny, actually, it was beyond that. When I was wor- a working designer, I actually, um, I actually got to beta a few design programs similar to Marvelous Designer. Oh, so, okay. So I um, really enjoyed that. So when Marvelous Designer rolled out, I bought it instantly because, and not under the um, idea that I was actually going to use it. I mean, I, I don't want to make this sound silly, but I didn't even think about using it for Second Life, right? I okay. just enjoyed creating the clothing, draping the clothing, making the patterns and doing the things I loved right? and watching it all come to life and stuff. And then um, I start, realized that, you know, okay, bring it into Maya, adapt it for the Second Life avatar until I figured out how to, you know, bring that avatar into Marvelous Designer. Right. So my workflow now is um, Marvelous Designer, design on either the Second Life or Sansa or avatar. Okay. Bring bring it to it all depends because each platform is different. Second life is bring it into Maya, add all the bells and whistles and um, which I, which are the belts, the trims, and anything that gives it more of an attitude. Okay. And um, and then do a traditional rigging to work so it works flawlessly with the avatar. So you now, do the rigging in Maya. I do the rigging in Maya for Second Life. Yes. Okay. Is amazing. A lot of people love it because they can go to lookbook. They can style their clothing, and I and I want to say I think it's one of the only virtual worlds, and I almost want to say game engines out there that lets you actually fuss with the clothing in a in the lookbook or pre pre game area before you freeze the avatar to go play. Yes, so, it is a nice feature. Yeah. So it's so what like this tunic is marvelous designer and can be fussed with when you're in lookbook you can roll up the sleeves you could have the one shoulder down whatever but the trim and the belt because of right now we're at early stages still Mm -hmm. in sansar the trim and the belt has to be traditional rigged um it i it can't be saved in the file the cloth physics file right now that needs to be it needs to be saved out to bring it into the lookbook with the tunic and fussed with in marvelous designer so um okay so, so how many different pieces are for sale for yeah. this outfit then yeah okay so you have the tunic which is one piece which okay. is eight piece then i have the gold trim that goes around the it's it's another thing which is on the the above the chest and the wrists okay and then i have the belt Oh, I see. So it's three pieces in total. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that, you're really looking forward to when you can actually sell things in packages on, <laughs> in the Sansar store. Yeah, and it will it will happen, but or that or just looking forward to the when we can actually just input import objects in a um in the marvelous designer in via marvelous designer through the whole. I don't know, it's hard to say because people they're not they're not turning away you know they're buying this they like it they buy all the pieces so that's great yeah so i guess it doesn't bother them that they have to buy it in pieces no i don't think right now it really bothers people people are pretty forgiving it's a beta Mm -hmm. you know so where do you draw inspiration for your designs (laughs) it all depends if my son's home from college or not if he's home from college i am bombarded with um watching him because my my workstation is in the living room where the big TV is, and he's usually playing his Xbox or games there. So he'll be doing a game, and so I get to whatever, like, he's playing. I get inspired by some of his gameplay and some of the avatars I see there. Or he's another one to watch streamers. So a lot of times I I keep up on what the gameplay avatars are doing, but... I'm a history buff. I love, I love costumes. I love oh, Victorian, medieval, oh, anything, Art Nouveau. I love all the, from I want to say from the '40s on. I just you know back. I love all the different the fabrics, the the styles, the trims, and um, I like to put my twist on it. Okay. Or a, a certain type of twist to it. Yeah. 
So what is the soulless twist? You know, it, it's hard to say because it just depends on the mood or it depends on what, what it's being uh, made for. Um, like I'm trying to think if, I mean, this is a ranger, an elf ranger outfit, which uh, is pretty just basic. It's pretty just rangerish, but she does have the gold trim on it. Yeah, I don't know. I just like to do, I don't know. I, it, that's a hard question. It's like just what you feel at the moment. A certain je ne sais quoi. Yeah. Okay. So um, how do you, do you normally design for a second life first and then decide to bring something into Sansar or how do you normally do it? Because I've been doing it um, for so long in second life, I have a lot of already made mesh. Now the, there is a little workflow issue there bringing it from Second Life to Sansar for me because the avatar proportions are different. Okay. And um, so basically it's almost faster for me to just make a whole new outfit than to, oh, I see. And try okay. to adjust it all. Um, this, this, yeah, because this, I basically, it was done in Second Life at the, you know, I think two, three years ago. And I brought it into a designer and redraped on the sensor avatar, but it took me a while to adjust the patterns that I got everything to hang like leather would and respond like I want leather to. Okay. Because um, a Second Life avatar is a lot bigger, so that everything comes in a lot small, um, bigger. But, so, yeah, so I, I, I sort of figured a new workflow would be basically to design for Sansar's avatar first because it's smaller and then um, rescale it up to Second Life because it's a little easier because Second Life doesn't rely rely on the sorry doesn't rely on the cloth physics and things don't have to the patterns don't have to be balanced and they don't have to fit okay. perfectly so that they hang like you want them to in lookbook when it's when you turn the physics on okay so, because we don't have that in Second Life then. When I move a smaller design up to a bigger avatar, it, it's okay if it's a little too tight because it, it's Second Life's a little bit more forgiving because it doesn't use the physics. Okay. Well, I want to ask the following question. Solis, you had mentioned that you have a background in fashion design. Could you tell us a little bit more about that, where you got your training <laughs> and where you picked up your experience working in fashion? Sure. Um, yeah, it's funny. I wanted to become a fashion designer at the age of five. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, basically because I saw the birds and the mice designing clothing and Cinderella. And <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah. And thought, oh, wow, that looks fun. When I went to high school, I grew up in Pleasanton, California, and the high school I was going to is um, very, um, I want to say, forward thinking. And they would take, like, if you had a really good career interest in something, they would put you on a track for it. Does that make oh, sense? Oh, cool. Yeah. So a lot of the art teachers, in, um, I, instead of just taking regular art, they would do it with some of the home ec teachers and combine it with, like, fashion to design. And so I would have to, I was already learning how to make patterns, already learning how to um, make prints and silkscreen prints and all that stuff in high school. So by the time I graduated from high school, I had a really nice portfolio to take with me. Great. And um, I basically was accepted at, um, um, what is it, FIT in, in New York, um, Parsons in New York, and then the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in Los Angeles, and I chose the one in Los Angeles primarily because I was 18 and I wasn't ready to move cross country by myself. <laughs> okay. So I stayed in California and went down, uh, went to the Fashion Institute and um, great school, still is a great school, still work with them in ways as alumni. Um, so got great. What training. sort of things do you do as an alumni with them? Um, it all depends. Sometimes it's just, it used to be that if they needed like mentors or something, they'd call you up and you could work with people or, uh, okay. or if you, you know, they need, there was a, or they had me go work with a state to build a PLM for the K through, um, or not, I mean, 12 through junior, um, junior college to um, build a curriculum for a fashion design track. So 
you know, stuff like that, that, you know, they refer certain people to off. And so I did a lot of that. Now it's mostly like the people, like if they have questioning, blossoming designers that have questions or something, I'm real open to talk to people. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. And then, um, but my first job out of design school was working for Great America which is an amusement park in Santa Clara where I got to design the costumes. And that was a trip. I mean, because you're not just designing um, clothing for humans, you're designing costumes for, at the time they were licensed by Warner Brothers. So we were doing the, um, what was it? Flintstones? No, it was Bugs Bunny and um, Yosemite Sam and Tweety Bird and all those guys. And so I got to do costumes for the characters along with, of course, the human costume. So that was a trip. Um, then I went to Gunny Sachs, Levi Strauss. Uh, I did some, some private label work for Liz Claiborne and, um, Royal Robbins. I, I mean, I worked in the industry for over 25 years. So I, it's, I have a, a, you know, not a real long list, but I worked for quite a few really great companies. Um, Chipman Union, I started and founded my own company and ran it um, an equestrian wear company for seven years, and that's what I was doing. We I sold it when I was basically diagnosed, but um, but yeah, and we made equestrian clothing, and um, that was worn by Olympians all over the world, which is pretty exciting. So, wow! Yeah. Well, it's great that you're still able to use all that experience in your work for Second Life and Sansar. And hopefully we'll see it in other virtual worlds as well. Yeah, we'll see. It's fun. Well, it's supposed to be a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> this is supposed to be a hobby, what I'm doing. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank you for coming out to speak with us today. Thank and um, I am very much looking forward to seeing your future creative work here in Sansar and Thanks. in Second Life. Thanks. And uh, that's pretty much it for the day. Well, thank you for having me. This is Ryan Schultz, and this is Metaverse Newscast. Thank you for watching. <laughs>